like to kick people's butts. Welcome back to Kicking Butts. My name is John, and today I'm bringing you another review, and this time it is on the IPv5 from a company called Pioneer for You. Now, this device was given to me by the good folks down at Vapor Syndicate to review for you, and I wanted to address something really quick because I've had a few people comment about it in the comment sections and stuff like that, asking, is it my shop? Do I own Vapor Syndicate? No, I, I wish I did. Actually, I'm just a frequent customer at that store, and I've gotten to know everybody in there, other regular customers as well as the employees, and I've become friends with the owner. A couple of months ago, we were actually having a conversation about putting a fish tank in his shop. I was telling him about my YouTube channel and how I would love to do a vaping channel, and that's when all of a sudden light bulbs went off. We started working together, talking about what we could do, and he said, hey, I will provide you with the products to review. You can promote the shop. We'll work together. Everybody wins. And so that is what's going on there. I am a person that I love to support small business as much as I can being a small business owner myself. So it, it's a perfect scenario for me. I get to promote their shop and I get to have cool stuff to talk with you about. So that is the extent of my relationship with Vapor Syndicate. I wish I was part owner, but I'm not. So I'll just be a regular customer and I'll talk about it in these videos and I'll be happy about it. So, all right, let's move on. Let's talk about this IPv5. So just a couple of quick things about this before we take a close up look at it. First of all, I'm not gonna do an unboxing because it's just the mod, the warranty card, a user's manual and a USB cord. So there's nothing really to show there, but it is a 200 watt temperature control device. It supports nickel, titanium and stainless steel. The body of the device itself is stainless steel. Mine is the silver version here. It's also available in black, white, blue, and pink, which I haven't seen any of those. The silver is the only one that I've actually seen. It's a dual 18650, so you're gonna get some pretty good battery life out of it. We'll see close up, but dual 18650. So overall, it's a nice device. Let's take a look at it up close, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you all the reasons why you will, and maybe some reasons why you will not buy this device. Okay, so a close-up look at this IPv5. This is the box that it comes in. I'm not really going to do an unboxing because, you know, like I said, there's, there's nothing in it. I mean, it's the mod, it's the instruction manual, and the warranty card, and that's it. So let's take a close-up look at the device itself. Like I said, it's a very high-end looking device. It almost has that Apple look. I mean, it, it's stainless steel, which looks really nice. It's very sturdy and very solid. So it just gives the impression of a really high-end looking device. And it performs like one, too. I mean, I'm not trying to say that it's, you know, just looks like it, but it really doesn't. It's a, it's a performer, too. So to put some batteries in this, we're just going to slide the battery door down, open it up. The sled all inside is all plastic, very clearly marked as to where the batteries go. And you can see down on the bottom here, it has these cups where the battery actually inserts into that negative down here. And this side is the reverse of that. Put the batteries in. Battery door just goes straight back on. It doesn't need to slide back up or anything. But let's get the ribbon in there. Come on, John. That's what editing is for. So there we are. Now we're back in place. Good to go. To turn the device on, we're going to click the power button or the fire button five times. Gives you the little logo. I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but there we are. It says check atomizer. I'll go ahead and put one on here. Take a wild guess. Anybody that knows me, take a wild guess of what I'm going to put on here. Yes, it's the aromamizer full of my good friend Nick's juice. This is Black Market e-liquid. I'll show you the bottle here. Really excited about this one. Uh, this is available on Vapor Syndicate's website, which I will link you to in the description. Very, very good stuff. This is the Sunshine flavor, which is a lemon cookie. Oh, hello. It is a beautiful thing. So that's what I've got in here. I've got the aromamizer on here. And now when we click it, it no longer says check atomizer. So taking a close-up look here, and I don't have to worry about it shutting off on me because this thing stays lit forever. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you've got your wattage, you've got your voltage, your resistance, and your battery, uh, the battery life that you have on it left. 
there's also this profile. This is M4. Now, I have not messed with the profiles, but you can set this up for different profile preferences. Uh, if you switch tanks around or you go from using a tank to an RDA and you have different settings, you can actually pre-program it in there. I have not done that yet, so couldn't even tell you how to do it. But it's nice to know that that option is there. So we've got our wattage up, wattage down, or temperature up, temperature down buttons there. Uh, if we want to get into the menu, we'll just click the fire button five times. That'll bring us there. This board on here is identical to the Segeli 90 watt. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have it right here. If you remember, I reviewed that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's the exact same board there. So you'll continue to push the fire button to get to what it is that you want to adjust. If you want to have this in power mode or temperature mode, which would be Joule, um, I keep it on power mode because I'm not a temperature control person. But if you want to set it to temperature control, that's how you would do it. Um, now, you're not going to get a whole lot more options as far as using it in power mode goes. But if you switch it to Joule mode, that's when you're going to be selecting Fahrenheit or Celsius. And you're also going to be selecting your temperature and the type of coil. You'll select titanium, nickel, uh, manual TCR, or their SX Pure, which is a tank that, has, that, that they have. I don't think it's out yet, but it's a Pioneer for You tank that is made specifically for this mod. Uh, it's supposed to be something special. I don't know. Haven't seen it. Um, and, of course, we shut off there. Go back to it, go back to power, go back to the menu, go to joules, Fahrenheit, temperature, and then we can continue on through here to show you stainless steel. So that was a very unorganized way of doing this, but I am going to go back to power mode because that is my thing, and I'm going to exit. Ah, I keep, there we go. Now I'm back to power mode. It's very easy to use. I, I just made a complete mess out of it. I know I made it look more complicated than it is, but it's a very easy board to use. This is the second mod that I own that has the same board in it, and I like it. I mean, it you know, it's easy enough to use, and, um, and it works well. So, I mean, for me, all of them work well because I just set it to 60 watts and I go. There's nothing really more to do, but that's that very nice looking device up close. I don't think I mentioned the USB port there. On the front, which, comparing it again to that Segeli that I talked about, which has it on the bottom, remember the complaints that I made about that? This is nice because it is on the front. However, this is not a charging point. This is specifically for upgradable firmware, and I do not know if there is a Mac version of the upgradable firmware. Probably should have found that out before I did this video, but you know, hey, it's not like I'm being paid to do this. So you, it's, I'm sure it's easy enough to figure out. And probably by the time I upload it, I will know it by then. But might be a Windows-only upgrade. So if you're a Mac user, you would have to find a friend that has a Windows computer to go and upgrade this. But for me, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know why you would need to upgrade the firmware on this. I mean, if you're somebody like me that's just a, a wattage user, you use it in power mode, what are you going to do? I mean... There's nothing really to upgrade there. So anyway, let's go back up and I will tell you my reasons why you will or you will not buy this IPv5. So there you have it, an up close look at the IPv5. Let's get right into some reasons why you will or reasons why you will not buy this device. So there are a few reasons why you will buy this device. One is the fact that it's a very formal, very sturdy, solid device. And it's something that looks good in the hand. It looks formal. It doesn't look like some piece of junk in your hand. It looks very, very high end. So if you like that kind of a slick look, uh, looks very high end, then you're going to definitely appreciate this device. Plus, it's a dual 18650. So you know that it's going to have good power. It's going to have plenty of battery life. We're going to talk more about battery life in a minute because I'm going to completely contradict myself. But overall, I mean, good device, plenty of power, plenty of battery life. It's easy to use. So those are all really good reasons to buy this device. But unfortunately, like I've said in other videos, there is no such thing as the perfect device. Thank God for that, because if there was, 
there would be no more innovation. So let's get into some of the reasons why you may not buy this device. So I'm gonna lump the first two reasons why you will not buy this device in together. I'm just gonna put them in as one. And one is, it is a little bit heavy. I mean, when I hold it next to my Segeli Fuchai uh, or the Rillo, which I don't even have any batteries in right now, but it's, it's heavy. I mean, now for some of you, you might look at that as a good thing, say, wow, that's just a sign of quality. But for others, they might get tired carrying this thing around. It's not outrageously heavy, but it is significantly heavier than other dual 18650s that I've used. And to go along with that, it's a little bit slick. You know, again, going back to the Segeli, I have other mods. I mean, you, this is always the one I show. And the reason why I always show this one is because I carry this around with me all day long. But going back to the Segeli, it's got that kind of a rubbery, kind of a sticky feel to it. Uh, not sticky, but you know what I mean. It's, it's easier to hold. It's got that rubbery feeling where this is the slick stainless steel uh, and it's a little bit slippery. Now, has it slipped out of my hands and I've dropped it? No, it hasn't. But it is a little bit slick. If you're used to mods that have that kind of a sticky feel, then you might not like that. But, I mean, if you can get over it being a little slippery and being a little bit heavy, then you'll be fine. I'm not saying it's heavy like you're going to be carrying around a briefcase. But it is heavier and it's noticeable, so I thought I'd mention it. Now, the next reason why you may not buy this device is something that you may have heard as I've been talking about it. My microphone is right here and I'm swinging my hands around. You may have heard this. Now, the battery door itself is, it's not, it has a tiny bit of rattle. Can you hear that? That's me going side to side. But it's also to open it like I showed you in the close-ups, you slide it down and then you open it up. Now, me being a person that I'm always fidgety, I'm always messing with something. It's why I bite my nails down to the nubs. I'm always, I've always got to have something to mess with. And when I'm holding this, if I'm like sitting in front of the TV, vaping on it, watching, I'm always, I'm doing this. It's hard to do it this way, but I'm just, I'm constantly doing that. I do that with cell phones if they have battery doors on the back. That's just one of those things that I do. And it's not like this is a thing where the door just falls off. I mean, it's held on there really well, but there's some play in it. And I like to play around with stuff when I'm bored. So that might be something that bothers you. But again, it's not bad. It's just, I think it's my problem more than it is the device. But that might be something that you would look at as a flaw with this device. When the door is in there, it's held in well. So don't worry about it. But you might sit there and mess with it. Now, the last reason why you may not buy this device is going to be the one that I told you was going to be completely contradicting what I said earlier, and that is about the battery life. Now, the battery life on this, because it is a dual 18650 and because I'm only using it at 60 watts, the battery life is very good. Now, I carry two mods with me. I've been carrying these around with me for about a week, nonstop, and I go back and forth, back and forth. I get a full day out of it. Now, I'm, I have a problem. I, I vape way too much and I work for myself. So I don't, you know, I can vape all day and nonstop. And I do. So for you, the average vapor, you probably would get more than a day. But for me, I get about a day on batteries. Now my Fuchai, I can get about a day and a half. So the battery life on the Fuchai is significantly better than it is on the IPv5. And you know what? I'm a genius. I've figured out why it is. It actually doesn't take a genius to figure out why the battery life is not as good. It's good, but it's not as good as other devices. And what I've done is I've, show, I've, I've put together a little demo here to show you why I believe the battery life is a problem. There's a very simple thing. Maybe it's something that they'll adjust in the upgradable firmware down the road. I don't know, but I figured out the reason why the battery life isn't as good. Let's take a look. So what I've done here is set up a timer and both the IPv5 and the Fuchai. I clicked the fire buttons and the timer all simultaneously. You can see that the Segeli is going to dim right at about 10 seconds. It doesn't go off, but it dims. And then the display is going to turn completely off right at about 18 seconds. But the IPv5 is going to keep on going. Now I'm going to 
ramp this up to two times fast forward so we're not sitting here but it goes for a full minute before it shuts off you wonder why the battery life isn't quite as good as the Segeli while having that bright screen lit the whole time that'll do it so there you go if the display is lit the battery is being drained and with this thing taking a solid 40 seconds longer to turn off than the Segeli does it's obvious why that would be harmful to the battery life. Now, I don't mean to scare you. This thing still has really good battery life. Like I said, I don't have to worry about battery anxiety. I can go a solid day on this with one set of batteries. I'll carry backups with me just in case, but I don't ever have to worry about it. I'll get a good day out of it, but it could be better. And I think if they fix that, if they took this and shut the display down at 20 seconds like the Segeli does, I think the battery life would be the same because I'm running them at the exact same wattage. I have the same atomizer on both of these mods, so it should be the same, but because of that display, it's not. So it had to be listed as a reason why you will not buy this device. Now, this might be something that they address in the firmware, but I don't even know if that's gonna be an option for me. I tried to download the, the software to do the firmware upgrades on this and I don't think there's a Mac version and I'm I'm on a Mac here so now I do have a Windows computer upstairs that I'll probably try to see if I can do it that way but you know I mean I'm not all that worried about it it still treats me good I still get a full day but like I said it could be better so I had to mention it so there you go my reasons why you will or reasons why you will not buy this device overall I do like this device a lot and it's actually become one of my daily drivers looks really good with the aroma miser on it I, I've been very happy with the performance of this device it has its quirks playing around with the battery door it's a little heavy a little slick but I've been very happy with it and I have put it right next to my Segeli as my two daily drivers these are the ones that I carry around with me all the time so if I had to make a choice which one would I keep and it's I can only keep one the Fuchai or the IPv5 I would keep the Fuchai that would be the one that I would choose between the two now I didn't talk about this earlier but if you put them up side by side they're pretty much the same size I mean, there's not a huge size difference. So if you've seen the Fuchai and you think it's too big, then you might not like this device because it's the same size and a little bit heavier. So, but again, if I had to pick between the two, I would keep the Fuchai, uh, mainly because I really like the feel of it and I like the Segeli finish, that rubbery finish that they put on there. And the battery life on that thing is just outrageous. So never have to worry about batteries with the Segeli. But... Do I like the IPv5? Yes, I like it a lot and I'm using it every single day and I will probably use it until it croaks and I will go back to the Rulo unless the good folks down at Vapor Syndicate supply me with something else, who knows? But these things are always changing, products are always getting better, they're always innovating, so who knows what's gonna happen. But I am a fan of this device. It has its quirks for sure, but overall, I definitely like it and I'll be using it every single day. So I hope that helps you out. If you're thinking about possibly getting one, they are available all over. This device is available for $80.99 on Vapor Syndicate's website, which is topshelfejuice.com. Check that out. I will put a link in the description. I do not get a commission or anything like that off of it, folks. That is just me trying to help out my friend and any of the other products that I've reviewed, you can also find on that website. Order them up. Help out a small vape shop. Help out a small business. It's a beautiful thing. Everybody wins. So thank you so much. I hope this review has helped be looking for more coming down the road. And hey, folks, if you want to know what it feels like to be a hero and save a life, convert your friends and your loved ones from smokers to vapors. And then you'll know exactly how it feels. I'll see you next time. Hey folks, if you're in the Northern Virginia area, come on by Vapor Syndicate on Dahlgren Road in King George, Virginia. The staff at Vapor Syndicate is top notch and they'll be more than willing to do what it takes to help you and your journey to kick the butts. Thanks again for watching.